All right, so welcome to Encounter 11. This is Introduction to the Hebrew Verb, to Hebrew Verbs. Um, it's very exciting because up until now we have done only nouns, and noun, nouns in coordination with adjectives, um, even verbless sentences, that is uh, like, habayit uh, gadol, the house is big. Now we're going to actually look at verbs, which have just been playing around in the in the periphery in our readings, um, giving us trouble. This week was basically an introduction to the concepts, and we didn't really get into the meat of what, you know, what the verb system is. We're going to start with the, the call system. Uh, call is, let me make the screen big for myself. I notice real quick that uh, Gio and John are on mute. You did that to yourselves, I hope, so... Uh, before we get started, we want to make sure that your mics work. Yes, um, I just was making some noise at this end, so I didn't want to drown you out. Cool. Gio, yeah, you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I did it on purpose. Okay. <laughs> well, I, like me. I was going to do the same thing because I think my mic might be kind of noisy, so when I'm not talking, I was just going to go on mute so as not to disturb or, All you know, right. create... Fantastic. Just remember to unmute yourselves whenever you want to participate. Sure. Uh, I need to put my phone on silent. I've had my phone recently uh, making noise. I always have my phone on silent, but recently I think I kind of wanted to have it open because I need to notice things that are happening now. Uh, okay, so let's see. Like I was saying, basically we're going to look at concepts related to uh, the verb system. We're not going to get into um, all of the details of the Hebrew verb, of course. Wouldn't you know that my pen just stopped working? That's wonderful. I was practicing with it earlier, and it was working fine, and now it's not. Okay, that's going to be fun. Um, so, um, we're going to get into definitions, we're going to get into um, some of the concepts presented in the textbook, but we're not going to actually tackle uh, forms and, and paradigms and stuff. So, let's get started and look what we got here. First of all, we have already in our vocabulary um, covered 48 different verbs. That might surprise you, but uh, these are the vocabulary words that we... We went over in the in the workbook until now that are verbs. Forty five of the verbs that we've covered are in the call system. When I say call, it's like this Q A L call. Call means light or easy. Um, it's it's called light or easy because it doesn't add anything into it doesn't add uh, formatives to the to the word. So. The basic form of patal, patal means he interpreted, patal. Um, it's the same form, it's the same shape as yarad, yarad. It's just the, the, the root, it's the root with uh, some basic vowel patterns, just a, a. That's as, as simple as you can get. In other... Um, in other systems, which we're, we're going to learn basically seven of them over the course of the verb study, uh, the other systems will add, they will add dagesh into the middle of the, of the second root. See like this, dagesh. This basically, because dagesh doubles the letter, that is adding another letter to the root. So it's no longer simple. Or they will add a noon prefix on the beginning. Or they will add a he field prefix, a he, a he prefix with a yod in the middle. Um, there are things that they will add so that it's not simple. It's not kal. Simple, easy, light. Um, but we're going to learn, until chapter 17, we're going to learn the entire kal system. And then once you've learned the kal system, the other systems just basically fall into place because they're, 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 they follow the same kind of pattern. Once you understand the whole system of Kal, then all the other Nifal, Pial, uh, Piel, Pual, Hifil, Hofal, and Nitfail, uh, they all just fall into the same pattern. So, uh, so what is the Kal system? Did you pick that? Do you pick the, the idea up from your reading, and can anybody explain it to us? Uh, 
Anybody who wants to answer, it's fine. Maybe if you studied Hebrew before. It's the easiest one. It's the active one. That's just the most common one. That's my simple way of explaining it. It's just active, but it's not mm -hmm. as active as the PL or the he field, which is causative. Mm -hmm. So that's that's probably, that's it. <laughs> that's the way I understand it. All right. So it basically looks at the simple meaning of the root, right? Um, right. So if we if we would say uh, shaval. Shaval, is this in our, no, it's not in our list, but Shaval, I'm going to have a hard time writing without the pen, so I'm going to just uh, type it if that's cool. Shaval, um, is that a microwave? Was that a microwave somewhere? Mm, is... Not here. Not okay. in my house. Fine. So, I'll, okay. Me neither. I'll, I'll mute, though. That's okay. Um, so, Shaval. Going to maybe make it make that a little bit bigger. Cheval uh, means break. Okay, it'll have the same vowels as the rest. Um, okay, so cheval, it means he broke. The same root can go into the PL as shibel. Okay, shibel, or also you might say shibal. Shibel would would the difference here shaval he broke shibel is a more intensive form it means like he broke to pieces like when he shattered maybe when um, when Moses went on Mount Sinai you got the Ten Commandments he came down found the people worshiping golden calves and he shattered the tablets and it uses vaishabel this is the the word that's used um, but it's the same idea. Shaval is breaking, and Shibel is like shattering, breaking it to pieces. Um, there, this is the call, the one Shaval, and that's what we're going to look at, the, the, the simple meaning of the root. Okay? Um, any questions about the meaning of what call means? Did you, you pick it up in your reading? Everybody understands it, basically? Maybe not. Not getting any response. I think so. Okay. Sweet, sweet. Anyone else? It'll break into perfect and imperfect. These are the two basic tenses. It also will have um, a part of the active and passive participles and a justive form. Justive is like, uh, let it be. Um, and cohortative is like, let us do something. We'll learn all of these terms as we, as we get into it. The Hebrew verb essentially is much, much simpler than, than the Greek verbal system. Uh, this is, I think, what makes me like Hebrew more than Greek. Uh, okay, let's get into concepts. So first, this is a look. Um, basically, I grabbed, a, like I took a picture of uh, the word chata from, from uh, this book here. Okay, it's a concise Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament. A very worthwhile lexicon if you're looking to get one. Here's the bibliol, uh, bibliographical, bibliographical data. Uh, so you can look it up on Amazon or whatever. The basic meaning of the word is sin. To miss a goal, to, um, according to this verse, Job 5.24, it means to miss like you miss somebody or you miss something. Um, to be at fault, okay, to offend, all right, to offend, um, to sin. This is in the kal. You notice the word kal right here, kal. The same root, chata, can appear in other, in other st uh, stems, in other systems. The PL is here, 
And it says basically it means to free from sin, to offer a sin to compensate to compensate for somebody's misdoing, to bring a sin offering. Okay, so in the PL, in the in the Kal it means to sin. The PL means to make a sin offering. And then in the Hifil, which is going to give you the forms, Echti, the Hifil means to lead someone into sin. And the Hitpael means to free yourself from sin. They're all related to the concept of sinning, but each stem gives a different coloring of the of the meaning of the root. So Kal is is generally the, the basic meaning, sin, to, to commit a sin. PL is normally uh, some kind of intensive, but in this case, it has to do with khata'a, uh, which is uh, the sin offering, khatat. The sin offering is, is committed with the PL. The hifil is to cause someone else to do it. And the hitpa, hitpail in this, in this instance means to um, basically make a sacrifice for yourself to stop, to stop sinning, to free yourself from sin and withdraw from it. Um, so we're going to look... As we go on with our vocabulary, at how different words take different meanings in different stems. Like a root can, can not all roots will appear in all stems, but roots that appear in various stems show common features that we'll get into later on. In the meantime, like I said, until chapter 17, we're going over, over only the kal. And kal means easy or light. Next. Um, I'd like to look at these as a review of numbers um, to translate the, the various expressions here. The first one is very, very easy. It's just a number uh, with a noun. Does somebody want to go ahead? We'll, if you don't mind, we'll just um, I've written down the order of people that I saw came as they came in. John, Ward, Dana, and Gio. So, John, would you go in and read and translate this if you could? Okay, so let's look at that vowel right there. Not shiv. Yeah. Shiv. I said something else. Mm hmm. Shiv. Vim. Mm hmm. And numbers are still a bit of a mystery to me, so. Okay, do you remember maybe one through ten or like echad, shtaim, shalosh, arba, chamesh, shesh, sheva. This is related to the word sheva. Sheva means seven. Okay, Shiva. And then when you add im, it means times. So seven times, uh, this is this is 70, seven times 10, 70. Shiv'im, Shiva, Shiv'im, Shiv'im, Shiv'im. Okay, so what the whole phrase together is, oops, the whole phrase together is, uh, Shiv'im Shana. Shiv'im Shana. What does it mean? You know? 70, you said. <laughs> what is this? I can't, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. So, that's 10. But this word, Shana. this word Shana means year. Shiv'im Shana. Seven. 70 years. Notice that it uses the singular, shana, but that's really common. It's very common to use a singular, even though you're using a, a number that's high. So, shivim ish, 70 people. Shivim shana, 70 years. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Um... I know that the, the numbers are troublesome. That's why we've come back to them. Um, should I put the numbers up on the board? Let's work through it and see if we can get them. Okay, let's see. don't know if this will let me 
type right to left. Oh, it does. Okay. So, echad or achat. Okay, achat is feminine. Shnaim. But we're going to say shnei. Let me put vowels for you. Echad. Achat. Shnaim. Okay, shnaim. The feminine is shtaim. Is this ringing, ringing a bell for you? Shalosh. Arba. Hamesh. Shesh, Sheva. I'm just giving the feminine forms because they're quicker to type. Shmone, Tesha. This is nine, Tesha. Oops. And Essel. Okay, so these are the feminine. The masculine are going to add a, so shalosh becomes shlosha. Arba becomes arba'a. Chamesh, chamisha. Shesh, shisha. Sheva, shiva. Shiva. Shmone, shmona. Tesha, tisha. Tisha. Eser, asara. Do you need to have those written out? Any feedback? Feel like nobody's uh, nobody's answering. So I'm writing them out because nobody's saying yes or no. So shisha. Shmona Can you see what I'm writing while I'm writing or um It's very small. It's but that's okay. It's small, it's orange, it's up in the corner, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to spot, but that's, that's maybe just me, but um, I'm just listening, this may be, that is in the book too, uh, the, what, masculine? I think masculine. Oh, that's brighter. I don't know if I can that's make it easier, easier to see. It, yes. Let me yes, try. easier to see. Well, it doesn't go from right to left, but it's okay. Um, so, echad o achat. Shnaim, shtaim. These are masculine and feminine pairs. And then they flip because uh, it was just how I typed. Shalosh, shlosha. Arba, arba'a. Chamesh, chamisha. Shesh, shisha. Sheva, Shiva, Shmone, Shmona, Tesha, Tisha, Eser, Asara. Mm -hmm. So basically, how you make how you make over here the im. This is like seventy. It's it's like seven. Um, check here. Seven, shiva. Okay, shiva, you drop the a and you add im. Shiva becomes shivim. So, tisha, nine, tisha becomes tishim. 
שמונה, אייט, בקום שמונים, אייטי. ארבעה, פור, בקום ארבעים, פורטי. חמישה, פייב, בקום חמישים, פיפטי. אוקיי? All of the, the long forms, you just drop A and it becomes Im for the, for the time 7. So, Shlosha, Shloshim, 30. Okay. Esr turns into 20 by Esrim, Esrim. Esr, Esrim, Esrim is 20. Okay. Is that... Uh, Pretty good. I know numbers are a pain, but we just really got to push through them because we got much more exciting things to do. This is a, this is a review. It's about uh, the vocabulary from two weeks ago, the numbers. Vocabulary was from two weeks ago and from, from this week. So um, who could read this one here for us? It's also an, all of these have numbers, all of these uh, these verses. They, these two are not verses, but from, from this one down, these are actual verses from the Bible. Okay. Shlosha batim dolim. Yes, batim meaning? Three big houses. Three big houses. Three houses big. Three big houses. Great. Fantastic. Uh, who wants to take the next one? a bit longer. This is actually from the book of Genesis, chapter 19, with the story of the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. I'll go ahead. I think I'm next. Um, or try. V'yabo'u shnei ha-malachim sedome ba-erev. Just that vowel right there. Sedom. Sodom. I, I can't see it. I'm going to say, is that a kamatz? Okay, Sodoma. Oh, <laughs> yeah. thank you. That's bright. Sodoma. <laughs> yeah. Sodoma. Vayavo shnei hamalachim Sodoma ba'erev. What's that? What's yeah. that? What is that R ending? If we know that the city is called Sodom or Sodom, Sodom. It means towards. It's directional. Yeah. It's exactly. directional. Hey. Yeah. So this is from the word bo. Lavo to come, vayavo mm -hmm. they came, and they came, and this is the subject. Shnei hamalachim, the two angels, Sodoma to Sodom and Baerev in the evening. Okay, fantastic. We're at uh, this one here now. If I can, if that looks okay. Who wants to jump on this one? We haven't heard from Geo. It's kind of long. Yeah, sorry. So that's. Uh, I will help you. I'll help you with real quick. That this is a verb, uh, meaning he drank, and this is a verb I think we've had, meaning he ate. Let's see. The rest of them, I think you should know. I think. This, do you know night? Laila? Probably not. Okay, so this Laila. one. So Laila is night and Leilot are nights. Okay. Lo achal lachem. Velo Shata Main Shlosha Yamim Ushlosha Lelo. Exactly. Yes. Can you can you tell us what it means? And that's going to be. <laughs> Can you you got to help me out. <laughs> so if if you know that achal means he ate, what do you, what do you think is lo achal? Uh, 
Yay, my pen's working. Okay. Lo achal. Lo means. Lo means not. Uh, not, not. Yeah. So lo yeah. achal. He like, didn't eat. He did not eat. What did he not he eat? Achem. Uh, mm -hmm. You remember the city of Beit Lechem, what it means? Do you remember the city? The bread? Yes, house of bread, right? Beit Lechem, house of bread. Bethlehem. Beit Lechem. He did. Uh, so, Lo Achal Lechem, he did not eat bread. Lo Achal Lechem. Mm -hmm. This one, it's another something he didn't do. Lo achal lechem. This means drink. He drank. He drank. And, and he did not drink. Mm -hmm. The water. Mm -hmm. He did not drink water. He right. didn't. He didn't eat bread, and he didn't drink water. And then you have what would in Greek be an accusative of time. Accusative of time, how long? So this tells us how long. He didn't eat bread and he didn't drink water. Uh, for like three... Mm-hmm. Three, three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. So yom is day, yom, and the plural is yamim. Laila, Laila, we've already talked about quickly. Laila means night. It's with shva. I can't seem to print. Okay, Laila. And the plural is Lelot. Shlosha yamim u shlosha lelot. Three days and three nights. Lo achal lechem velo shatamayim. Shlosha yamim u shlosha lelot. He didn't eat bread and he didn't drink water for three days and three nights. Okay, that's uh, this is word for word taken directly from the Bible. All right, this one I altered a little bit. We're back to the top of the list. We're back at John. This one I altered a little bit um, because what you see here at the bottom is what you would really expect to see. But this is what we have in the Bible, and I'll explain real quick after we've gone through it what the difference is. Okay. Shiva. Shabuo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this makaf makes it a, a closed syllable that's unaccented. Okay, that unaccented closed syllable, that's a short vowel, it's actually O. It's actually O, T-spo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Shiv'a Shavuot T-spo'lach. Okay, lispo, lispo is safal, and safal means, it was actually in the vocabulary also, it means he counted. Safal is he counted, so tispo is you will count, this is the, the future, the imperfect. You will count to you, so seven weeks you will count to you means count off for yourself seven weeks. It's from Passover until uh, Shavuot and the, the Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, seven weeks. You'll notice here that we have kibbutz, and here is 
Shuruk. Here is Cholam, uh, like a regular one, and here is Cholam Vav. We would expect normally, historically long vowels to remain long like all the time. Um, but you will find that Shuruk is the long vowel and Kubut can also be long. So sometimes it's written defectively. Defective writing. Okay. And it happens in the Bible that we'll find words that we expect to have long vowels with Vav that are written defectively without the Vav. And sometimes we're going to see another one later on that's going to have where we would expect there to be a, a Yod for a plural and it's missing. And it's okay, we'll find those. Also, the word Lecha for you, when it's in pause, we spoke about pause a few lessons ago, when it's in pause, becomes lach, just like the feminine form. So tispor lach here is actually a masculine form in pause. Shiva shavuot tispor lach. Uh, but it means shiva shavuot tispor lacha. Okay? All right. Uh, got a headache from that? <laughs> I always worry that I give people headaches because I, I find these kinds of things interesting. But uh, Okay, so we've got Ward going into this sentence uh, about Joshua. This was whenever the uh, Israelite people were crossing the Jordan River and they set up an altar of stones in the middle of the river. Okay, so this is, uh, I, I guess I'll circle that. There oh, there, there you are. Welcome back. Time. Time. Yeah. Yes. 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 Shtemesre is 12. Shtemesre. You can see the word, you can see the word 10 written right there. Esel or Asara. Mm -hmm. And so Shtemesre means 2, 10. 2 and 10. It's uh, 12. Evani. Evani. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is from the word Evan. And Evan means stone. Stone, okay. Avanim. So Avanim is stones. This word is feminine. This word is feminine, by the way. It looks it looks masculine. Avanim looks masculine, but it's feminine. This is the verb Hakim. Kim, so they took 12 stones. Well, it's from the word kum. Kum means to to arise or to, to stand up. Okay. So this is the Hifil version. It means he stood up, like he stood something up. He stood up 12 stones. Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. uh, Beto. Yep. Ha-ya. Ayarde. Yarden. Ayarde. 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 Yeah, that's, that's a Ayarde. long one. Yeah. Okay. Betoch, Betoch, Betoch means in the middle of, right? Okay. So you want to read it again, a little bit running toward it? From the beginning? Uh huh. Ushetaim. Shtem. Look at look at this one again. Look at it. S. 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 Yehu Shua Ho 
Yahushua, Yahushua, de todo, a Yarden, Yarden, Yarden es Jordan, Yarden, uh, back to the pen, let's see, Yarden, uh, Yarden is also the country that's across the river from Israel, Yarden. So, Ushtem uh, Esrei Avanim, Hekim Yoshua, this is the verb. Joshua set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan River. Ushtem Esrei Avanim, Hekim Yoshua Betoch HaGarden. Okay? All right. And uh, the, la the longest one falls to uh, Ward to have fun with <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. I thought John did that. Oh, that this falls to Dana. <clears throat> okay, I, I can see it. Lo tu chal ala chametz. Shivat yamim to chal ala matzot lechem oni. I should have put an accent on that. I should have put the accent here. This is oni. This, this, uh, oni. Does that yeah. mean poor, poor? Yeah, poverty, right. Poverty, okay. Uh, he, uh, you, uh, it looks, is it a command? You will not take upon you hametz, uh, seven days. But what is this, um, this verb here is alef kaflamed. Not take, but eat. Do not eat, eat, do not eat. Yeah, you will not eat on it. Chametz. Chametz is uh, leaven or leavening agents. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, seven days. Uh, you will eat on it. Um, matzo bread, matzo poverty. Or I, I'm not quite sure yeah. how to interpret that. Uh, uh -huh. um, you will eat. This is on this holiday. You will eat on it. Matzot, which are unleavened breads, uh, unleavened uh, cakes, um, like crackers. And it says lechem oni means bread of poverty. It means it's uh, bread of the affliction. It's, um, it means that it's not good bread. It's poor people food. Okay. okay. Uh, so this right. is obviously from the, the commandment. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 6 talking about um, instructions for the different holidays. And this is for Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Breads. You shall not eat on it chametz, which is, uh, you know, anything that causes something to become leavened. Shivat yamim. This is a construct expression. Seven of days. Tochal alav matzot lechem oni. Uh, very nice. Next. The next slide is a bonus uh, question. I don't know if anybody's interested in doing this. This is completely unadapted text from uh, from 1 Samuel. Essentially, all of the blue are names. This is Yishai. It's the father of da uh, King David. Shaul was the king before David. Eliav, Shama. And Avinadav are brothers of King David, the other sons of, Je of Jesse. Um, and the red are words that you are unfamiliar with uh, until now. Okay, is anybody interested in doing this or we, should we just move on to what's next? We don't have to do this, it's, it's bonus. I just, uh, what excited me today when I was putting together the reading sections is that uh, this chapter in the reading is the first time where it's almost completely unadapted. Unadapted means they didn't change anything when they put it into the reader. Does that not excite, excite you? That it excites does. Me. Oh, it, it, sure it does. Yes. <laughs> um, I got it. I know that a couple of you were reading from Exodus chapter 20 this week on your own, and that's exciting. Uh, the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. Um, how did you feel about that? It was very exciting. 
<laughs> yeah. What did you What did you pick up from it? Like, were you able to understand it? This is Ward, right? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't hear voices. I could read. I just spent time on the first three verses. Uh huh. And I know there were some verb forms there. I didn't know. Like, there's a verb from davar. Vaidaber. Mm -hmm. Which he spoke. Yeah. Vaidaber. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew it was something like that. I just didn't know it. Mm -hmm. But most of the other words I could kind of follow. So it was pretty, it was very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know, I, know, I know two months ago, I had nothing. So. Mm -hmm. I have to say, once, once, you, once you get to take your nose out of, the, out of the grammar book and put it into the Bible, the, the learning curve for Hebrew is, I think, much, much sharper than the learning curve for Greek. The, to the point that after a year of Hebrew, you really can open the Bible and read. Um, yes, I agree. And I felt mm -hmm. I felt that after I did a year of Greek, I still wasn't prepared for much beyond like the Gospel of John. You know, the, the Gospel of John is the easiest, yeah, read, the easiest, easiest of Greek. I think I Hebrew is... I'm sorry, go ahead. I, saying, I read First John and John, and I thought I was getting pretty good, and I tried Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Why yeah, I'm not had anything. Exactly. Like we did first year Greek covering mounts. Second year we did uh, Metzger's lexical aids, and we translated uh, for, uh, the Gospel of John. Um, but still, even going into third year Greek, I was memorizing parts of of Galatians in in Greek, but I don't think that I was ever prepared for for reading Luke and Hebrews. You know. Anyway, back to Hebrew. Hebrew has a much better learning curve. I promise you by the end of this course, not this course, but the next one, whenever we're doing the rest of the verb system, uh, up till the end of the, the textbook, um, you're going to come out of that really reading the Bible. Like, uh, like you're right now beginners, basically, and you're picking up Exodus 20 and reading through it and, and enjoying it. And, and that's wonderful. Um, I want to now just look at the concepts that we were presented with in in chapter 11. Um, this one gave me a headache whenever I first read, you know, the, the have the, uh, the, vowel, the verb, excuse me, the vowel rules, and they said preformative. I didn't use any of this terminology when I was learning. And so they, where did they reprint the vowel rules? On page, page uh, 163 at the beginning of chapter 12, and they complete the vowel rules about near open syllables, and they say that they reduce for verbs, but lengthen A-class vowels and preformative vowels. I'm like, what does that mean? You know? <laughs> that, because I'm learning these rules as uh, as I'm putting the slides together, because these these are not things that I learned. Um, we just memorized the forms, and I think I learned it pretty fine. But I'm going to try to explain what they're saying as we get to it. But it's uh, it's weird for me. It's like a lot of information. Um, do you understand the difference according to their terminology between? A prefix, oops, excuse me, a prefix and a uh, preformative. Is there anybody who has any clue what that means and why this would be significant from the reading? I understood, oh, I, it. I, I, I understood it when I read it. Um, now that you have it up on the screen, though, mm -hmm. um, I don't remember their distinction, and I'm not entirely convinced that knowing their particular definitions has any um, practical implications. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I'm happy to be convinced otherwise. No, I mean, uh, I, I always, I thought preformative and prefix were the same word. It's just, when I looked it up on the internet... They said that preformative is the way that people used to call prefixes, <laughs> you know? So I thought that they were the same uh, thing. Um, Ward, you started to give a response, I think? I understood what they were saying, but I don't remember right now for sure which is which. Mm. 
Okay. I think when when we when we took like a verb and we put the yod or the tau in front of it for yes. Yes, this is, is a pre right? it's a preformative, yes. Um, I've put some examples on the next slide. The root itself is shin mem ein of this word, shama. Shama means he heard. If you add a letter to create the tense, like the future tense, the imperfect, you will add yishma. The yud, the, the yud here, is uh, is a preformative. It's necessary for the for the tense itself. Anything you add to the beginning is a preformative. Anything you add to the end would be a subformative. Okay, so shama means he heard. Shamati with uh, with taf yod. Shamati means I heard. Shamati. Okay, shamati, I heard. So this is a subformative because it's part of the tense. Okay, it, it, it will tell you uh, person, it will tell you number, and it will tell you gender. Person, number, and gender. gender. So we would say person is like second person. Number is, uh, well, it's going to, these are going to be, Inverse. It's going to be gender and number, so it's going to be masculine and plural. 2MP means second person, masculine, plural. And this is going to be an ending that's added to the word, and they call them pre, uh, subformatives and preformatives. Okay? Anything else that's added, like the interrogative hey, when it's asking a question, ha, is it? Ha yishma, will he hear? The ha is a prefix. It's not part of the, the verb itself. Um, it's just added to ask the question yes or no. It's like Greek ara. Um, it's asking question yes or no. And not expecting a positive or negative answer. Okay. Um, so if, if yadata... Yadata means you knew. Yadata. Yadata is you knew. If I add ha to the beginning of it, it means did you know? Ha yadata, did you know? This is the interrogative uh, prefix. Okay. Uh, have we covered this yet? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. The, the this prefix ha meaning uh, yes or no question. I think we did. Okay. I think it's in the chapter. Fantastic. Good. Good. Uh, so that just that is just a like a addition that asks a question yes or no. Uh, it's not part of the not part of the verbal form. So this is a prefix, but this is a preformative. Okay. That's a distinction that they that they're drawing. The next one is the same thing, but it's um, it's with suffixes and subformatives, which is exactly the same thing. Where here shama means he heard. Sham, uh, okay, so shamanu means we heard. The new ending here means we shamanu shamanu, but that new ending can also mean. He, like uh, us, as an object. So, shma'anu, shma'anu means he heard us. In this case, it's a subformative. In this case, it's a suffix. It's a suffix because it's not part of the verb. It's actually a personal uh, object pronoun. Shma'anu. We are not learning this yet. This comes up in chapter 17. So we don't need to uh, to learn the suffix endings yet, but uh, we will eventually. Just so you know, there's a difference between subformative and suffix in their terminology. All right, another term, root versus stem. What is a root in, in verbal terminology, and what is a stem? Hmm. 
any clue what they what they meant. The root is the base word, the three letter, three consonant word, mm -hmm. and the stem comes at the end. Um, it could be him or whatever is attached to it. Suffix or the suffix. <clears throat> no, the stem stem is going to be Kal Nifal Hifil. It's the they call it verbal stem. That's what they call it. The the seven uh, okay. patterns into which a verb will fall. So if we have Shama as our example, he heard. This is the root. Okay, Shama. We can put Shama in a different stem. We can put it in the Hifil stem. It's the, uh, this is what we call binyan in Hebrew. Stem is binyan. Binyan. Okay. So you can put it in the Hifil stem and it becomes Hishmiya. Hishmiya means he caused someone to hear or he played something. He played music, may, played a message. He made somebody hear it. Hishmiya. This is with Fertif Patach the end. Hishmiya. So basically, you can put the root, the three letters, generally three letters, sometimes four, you can put a root into a stem. Okay, so stem can be kal, it can be nif'al, which is like the passive of the kal, hif'il, huf'al, um, you can put hitpa'il. There are seven stems that we will learn eventually. It all looks like a mess right now. But basically, we're dealing with roots that are expressed in these patterns that we call stems. Okay? For example, chata we looked at before means he sinned in the kal. This is the stem. In the pl, which is a different stem, we see a doubled middle root and we have the vowel pattern ea. Like P L P L E A, chite. He made amends for someone. Hifil is echti. Means he made he made somebody sin. Hitpael is he freed himself from sin. Hitchate, hitchate. What you should see is the chet tet aleph. Chet tet aleph is the root in all of these. This is a preformative. That's a preformative. This one has the infix uh, dagesh, and this one has yod. It's an infix. We will get to all of those with time. Right now, we're dealing only with kal. So we're going to cover the entirety of the verb system that is kal. All right. Theme vowel is a little bit meaningless at this point. When we learn the imperfect, it will become important. They introduce the idea of the theme, theme vowel. Um, normally, for example, with shamal, the future is yishmo. This is the theme vowel right there, o, because we have other roots that instead of yilmod, you're going to have yilmad. That's a diff different theme vowel. So he heard shama becomes yishma with this theme vowel, ah. You have o and you have ah. We have different types. So that's what theme vowel means. It's not important until we get to the imperfect. Sentence versus clause versus phrase. This comes down to linguistic classifications. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Every sentence is a clause, but not every clause is a sentence. Phrases play into clauses. You have a noun phrase, prepositional phrase, you have an adverb phrase, you have so many different types of phrases and syntax that come together to form clauses. And then sentence is just a nice word that we like to use for an independent clause. We've got dependent clauses and independent clauses. Very, very simple. 
the dog ran away and the dog heard a noise, heard a loud noise. These are the same two, these are independent sentences. The dog heard a noise. But when we pair them together with a subordinator like when, it becomes uh, this sentence is dominating that one. The beautiful dog ran away when it heard a loud noise. These are our subordinators, common subordinators in Hebrew. Asher means which, who, or when. It's simplified as she, that we've talked about before, with dagesh in the next word, in the next letter, she. Ki is that or because. Lema'an, I don't know if you can see, lema'an is so that or in order that. And pen means lest, or so that not, so that something doesn't happen. Okay, Pen has dropped out of modern Hebrew. Nobody uses it. Lema'an use, is used in modern Hebrew as well as all the, the others. Only pen is dropped out. Um, instead of lema'an, often we say bishvil in modern Hebrew. It means uh, for or in order that. Okay. All right. Um, that is all that I need to present until this point. That's all that was covered in this chapter. It's just introductory. So the question is, um, do you have questions about that material that we can go over? Anything that you feel that is essential that you didn't grasp or that you want clarified? Only in the next chapter we'll get into the meat of uh, the patterns that verbs fall into. Right now it's just concepts, and I know it's a lot of concepts. Some of it is probably not important, but um, I just needed to throw it at you. So questions before we move on to reading. No questions? You guys aren't very... Uh, and very energetic today. Um, <laughs> Jason, I'm like... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I guess my question, and I don't know why it's up there. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's uh, on pay, and in the book, 159. Uh-huh. It's El, there's the Yod before God's name. Yod Ha Elohim. And I had no idea what that was or why that was up there. It's in Abraham said to God, but you'll marry Abraham L. And then there's a yod. And I couldn't figure out ah, yeah. uh, that's not a preformative. I, re I really think that they were going to type uh, yod -Heh vav -Heh, but they decided to type ha Elohim and they just left the yod there by accident. That's a typo. That makes sense. That makes sense because I'd never seen that before and I didn't know if that was something. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I, I, I didn't catch that either, so thanks for pointing that out. I had a question. The thing that I thought their section on accents wasn't perfectly clear. I didn't think. Accents. So I can kind of read it. Mm -hmm. I can kind of read it and follow, and they talked about disjunctive and conjunctive mm -hmm. and the end of the verse so is very straightforward. Uh -huh. Then they give this example, Vayelech El um, Yehuda, you know, went to, to find the prostitute. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I still don't kind of get what those accent marks are meaning. The, what is it, um, Na at the end I get, middle of the verse. All right. But some of the ones, some of the ones above were not. I hope it would be acceptable to do a class on accentuation in the Hebrew Bible. It's really, it's not too important for our purposes, but it does add uh, some, okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example before I can, before I'll even, we had a verse earlier about Passover, not eating breads for seven days, this one. Lo tochal alav chamech shivat yamim tochal alav matzot lechem oni, um, when I looked at this, the word shivat yamim, the, the phrase, I didn't know if it belonged to 
if you know logically if it belongs to this verb or if it belongs to this verb is it you shall not eat on it chametz for seven days or is it you shall not eat on it chametz period seven days you shall eat on it matzot I didn't know which phrase it went with when I checked the uh, the accents it indicated to me that it should go with this one just reading the accents um, but that would be an interpretation um, the accents that are written on it are are mecha here if I can write with a pen oh my pen is dead oh there it is mecha and tvir which is one that looks like this if you look in the text it will have these accents written on it and to me that's dis that's uh, disjunctive enough that it breaks here and that it goes with the previous that's how i would interpret it according to the to the vowel to the accents um a lot of it is kind of guesswork there are some that are obviously broken like there are some like this one the end of this verse is going to be sof pasuk that is important we talked about et nachta and how it causes pause. It's this wishbone one. Um, these are the two really big important ones. Um, but they're, since they're not teaching the, the, the accents mark at this point, they, they mention Rivia, they mention Zakef. There's a Zakef Katon, which they marked incorrectly in the book. And there's Zakef Gadol. I would like to, after you're able to read Hebrew well, at the end of the second course, do a couple a couple of week course on how to read the accents, on, on what they mean as far as singing. Because each of the marks is a tone. Like um, this one, Zakef Gadol, looks like this. It goes on top of a word, and you would sing it, Zakef Gadol, like it has this tone that goes with it. There's also a Zakef Katan, which is just the two dots. And um, we call it Katon, but a lot of people call it Zakef Katan. It me, how does it go? Mm, I can't think of the tone right now. I can't think of a phrase. But each mark that goes on a word represents a tone. So right here, this is going to be, this one is mercha and this is uh, tipcha. I know that from looking at the accents earlier. It's mercha uh, tipcha. So this is tochale lav matzot. This is how you read it according to the accents for reading in public. That's what the accents are for, for reading in public, for public reading. Public reading. It doesn't really have much use in Christian uh, in the Christian approach to Hebrew because you don't read the Torah publicly. You know what I mean? Hmm? Have it'd I? Be nice if they would. It'd be nice if they would have just said that in the book. Okay. <laughs> so, so that it, does that answer your question? I know it's it's a complicated yeah. question. Yeah, it does. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the only thing that you really need to know about the accent is the major disjuncts. That is uh, the major accent that divide a verse. It basically stops the, the reading before the next word. And those, the major ones, are et nachta and sof pasuk. This is the big colon that you see at the end of the word with siluk. Siluk look, looks like metek, but it, it, uh, it marks sof pasuk. Do, do um, those two accents both have implications for reading, singing in public, or are they strictly interpretive? These are logical breaks. These are important breaks that cause the word to change. Um, if you think, we mentioned earlier about the word lecha, lecha, meaning you, to you. The changes when it's in pause to lach. It really changes the pronunciation of the word from lecha to lach. You will see this with et nachta. This, this mark will go there. 
Etnachta or Siluk, which is a mark like Metek, and Sof Pasuk looks, looks like two diamonds, like uh, large enlarged colon. <laughs> Uh, that's not a nice way to call it, but uh, <laughs> it's a colon at the end of the verse <laughs> that is enlarged. And so it, lecha, in normal sin, in normal uh, situation, becomes lach, for masculine. Another example is the word um, yidaber. So yidaber, when you go to the plural, is, I can't write, yidaberu. So, ye, da, be, ru. This is the normal, he, uh, they will speak. They will speak. Ye, da, bru. You see, da, ber. Ye, da, bru. When it's in pause, when it's with et, nachta, or with sof, pasuk, and there are a few other major disjunctives, it will become yedaberu with a with a long vowel that's accented. Yedaberu. At the end of a verse, we're not going to see yedaberu. We're going to see yedaberu. Instead of yishmeru, this is not shin for you. Yishmeru. Yishmeru. This is from the verb shamal. Shamal is guard, keep. Yishmeru, it has the preformative ye and the subformative u. Yishmeru, they will keep. Instead of yishmeru, you're going to see yishmoru with the long o that's accented. Yishmoru. This is in pause with etnachta, sof pasuk. Sometimes with Rivia, sometimes with... Uh, there are other accents that do it. Zakef does it, which is why they mentioned it. Um, you know, that's the only thing that is important for, for uh, division of uh, the verse into pieces and for marking pause. That is um, the, the changes in, changes in vowels. Okay, that's a, that's a lot of information. Um, don't worry so much about them. But I would like to do a couple of days, like a couple of sessions on them when we finish the course, if you're interested in learning something about them. <coughs> I think it'd be interesting. Um, and also, after having heard uh, some of the singing, the tropes, or... Um, it sticks in the memory, even when not hearing it. The singing part, um, for some reason, just stays in the memory. Yeah, like, I think so too. De Deuteronomy, the Shema, yeah. mm -hmm. reading it. You know, Deuteronomy chapter six is part of our uh, of our daily reading. In the Jewish tradition, you sing it. You don't you don't read it. You sing it. So, like the mm Havta -hmm. et Adonai Elohecha b'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha v'chol mukhecha. The, the verse after that starts, um, no, the Vahavta is where we start singing. Vahavta et Adonai Elohecha b'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha v'chol me'odecha. This is like something you sing, and that's how you memorize it. That's how you commit it to memory, by singing it. But, oh. uh, yeah. Okay, so anyway... Um, uh, any other questions before we get to reading? Sorry, that, that was a big explanation, uh, but it's also a big question. So, Any other questions? No, we're good. All right, so let's go to reading. Let's see where we were. I don't know. There we are. Okay, these texts, I'm going to show you this one here. I grayed out these words because <coughs> these two words are the only words in the reading that we're going to do today that are changed, um, adapted, if you will. These two words, Vayichav um, Af. All the rest of the text that we're going to go over, and it's not too many slides, but it's from 18 to 23. That's one, two, three, four, five, six slides of reading. 
Um, they are all unadapted texts taken right from Genesis chapter 40, exactly as you would see them in any printed of the, uh, edition of the Bible. So this is where we've gotten to. Yes. And we're starting the verb system. And you guys, Hebrew is going to take off. And I'm very excited to see it. So um, let's again start. We'll do John, Ward, Dana, and Geo in that order. And we'll see what we want to do with the last two slides. Uh, John, you want to go ahead? Okay. Bahi, Ahar, Advarin, Elem, Let's just correct that one letter right there. Not LM, but LA. Yeah, that's a hey. So ha e le. Ha e le. Ha e le. Oh, that's an accent under the L yeah, there. That's an accent. So that the hot U. What's Mitzrayim? Do you know? You remember that? Egypt. Yep. 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 So notice that this word to sin, they sinned, is going to take the preposition lamed to say who they sinned against. They sinned against with the lamed. Okay. This Lamed here, and that's, it's repeated here. This is an appositive. It's the repetition of the same preposition. La Adonehem. La Adonehem. Mm -hmm. Lamech. Melech. That's a, that's a good hard Ch. Lamech. Yes. Melech. I'm not very good on metals. Yeah. It's all right. It's Melech. And then means Rahim. Melech. Melech Mitzrayim, the king of Egypt. Okay, so do you want to translate that for us? Or first of all, are there any questions you have regarding vocabulary or anything you see in there? Um... The, uh, yeah, there's some vocabulary issues. Okay, so you can circle the words that are that give you trouble. Well, that one. Mm -hmm. This is from to be, I yep. assume. There were, um, he was, there was. Have you ever read the Book of Mormon? No. Pardon? Sorry, were you referring to yeah. the Book of Mormon? Yeah, the Book of Mormon. So the Book of Mormon says over and over, and it came to pass. And it, it came to pass. Like you'll read um, a verse, and within that verse you can find four instances of it, and it came to pass. It happens over and over and over and over. You've never read a book like this. This would translate the uh, this expression vayhi. Vayhi in the King James is many many times written, and it came to pass. So that's that's basically the the idea that we're getting there. And it came to pass. Okay, do you get this phrase with no problem? The, uh, the words. Um, Remember, we've got Hadavar Hazeh. I can't type, I can't write with my pen again. So, Hadavar Hazeh. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Adavara Ze means this thing. And this is the plural. Hadvarim Haele, these things. Great, not words. Yeah, Davar is word or thing. It's more commonly thing unless it says the words of someone. Like Divrei Hanavim, the words of the prophets. Divrei Adonai, the words of God. But most of the time it's a, it's a thing. Hadvarim Haele, these things. The word Achar, Achar means after. Vayhi Achar Hadvarim Haele. And it came to pass after these things. And then we would introduce here the, uh, we would say that in English translation right here. We're going to say that. Okay. So, and it came to pass after those things, after these things, that. He sinned. Mm -hmm. They sinned. Mm -hmm. and we've got two people. This is one, and this is the second. Um, mashke it means cup bearer. Oh, this passage. Okay, the cup bearer. That's. King of Egypt. Yeah, the cupbearer of the that's, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's one big construct chain. And yeah. the so, and yeah, yeah. The, you'll notice that the, the this is a tsere, The the vowel is a. This indicates its construct. Just so you know, normally the the words that end in hey, like this, it's a segol. Segol hey, and then when they go into construct, it becomes sere. So mashke, mashke melech Mitzrayim, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt. The how? And the oh, was that the cook? Uh, cook is tabach. Tabach. This is baker. Tabach. Tabach is cook. Ofe is baker. And the baker mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. Their ruler. Their, their master. The, their master, the king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So you, the relationship, the general relationship is Adon and Eved. Eved is a, is a slave and Adon is a master. Okay. So this is an opposition. To yes, that. it is. So against their master, against the king of Egypt. Okay. Is a chata. The word chata takes um, the lamed prefix for the one that is sin against. Okay. Uh, Ward, the next verse, please. So, just notice, just notice where the accent is on the first word. Vayihar. Vayichal, 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 Faro, Al Shne, Sarim, Tak. Okay, there's um, this letter here is the same letters here. Not sorry, it's oh, a, sorry, 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 sab. Mm -hmm. sorry, sab. Al sar. 
um, mashkim. Yeah, and mashkim is mashke from the last verse, meaning cupbearer. This is plural. Remember, they are sar ha ofim. Mm -hmm. Sal in this Sal in this instance is like Rosh. Right? It's like it's like head, chief. Rosh. Okay, so Sal Hamashkim is the chief cupbearer, and Sal Haofim is the chief baker. Right? So when somebody's not when somebody's nose gets hot, it means that they, they got angry. So Pharaoh got angry. Vayichal af paro. So that like an idiom? It is. Mm. <coughs> and so the vayichal wouldn't by itself mean angry. Vayichal. Um, Chara is like to to get. I think it means like to get hot. It's not a word that we use anymore. It's only used in this expression. Vayicha af, vayicha af mishu. I I mean I've never heard anybody use it today. Let me see what the dictionary says about it. Yeah, he says to become hot. <laughs> Just yes. to ask on mm -hmm. that, um, Yichar off. Um, I I don't know where I, where I remember hearing it, but the nose had to do with anger. Mm -hmm. off. Yeah. And um, it was explained that when a person gets angry, their nostrils widen. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I've always remembered that. So that's why I thought well, I connect off as nose with. Um, yep. Exactly. Hot, for angry, hot, and flaming. I mean, veins sticking like, out and everything. You can, imagine, you can imagine somebody blowing steam out their nose, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yep. So so it, it means it, the nose of Pharaoh became hot. Vayichal, it's not Vayichal, it's Vayichal. Okay, the, the accent is on the, the penultimate. Vayichal okay. af par o. Okay, the, the uh, Pharaoh's nose got hot. Mm -hmm. Against two of his servants. Yeah, the, specifically his, his officers. And against. If uh, Saris means eunuch, it could also be an official. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so cup, can, you, can, you, bearer, can you maybe explain the ending there? What's going on? Why well, of? I would, I would first look just at the uh, the vav, and I'd say that means his. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's is that plural? So it's that's the yo tells me that's a plural. Yes. It's mm -hmm. yes. two or more. Mm -hmm. It's correct. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it, because it's two. It's sarisim, and you take off im, and you add uh, you add the the vav, and it becomes ad sarisav. If it were one official, it'd be sariso, one official. But this is sarisav. Okay. Do you want to keep going? Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the, the all I would take in this case is being against, mm -hmm. and then the chief uh, cupbearer, mm -hmm. and against the chief uh, baker. Yep, yep. So the al here, like you said, means uh, against. It's repeated three times here. This is the initial one, and these two are a positive. They're giving... Um, we could, we could call them epexegetical, right? They're just giving more information about this. So Pharaoh got angry with his two, uh, his two officials, and then this is official number one and official number two against the, the chief cupbearer and against the chief uh, baker. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope it's not corona. 
Donna. <laughs> Donna, please uh, go ahead and read the next one, please. The Yitan, the Yitan Otan. Okay, I have to stop you. I have to stop you. I'm sorry. This, uh, the, these accents here are an, a neat pair. They're very neat. These, these are called Kadma Vazla. It's a pair that reads when you when you read it out loud. It goes Kadma Vazla. So it's a it's really a neat uh, pair. The accents right there. Since since we're at the point <laughs> where we're, we're at the point where we can point out the accents and uh, and show you basically what's mm -hmm. going on with them, that is a really mm -hmm. neat pair. The one that goes up and the one that that meets it. These are oh. these are a pair called kadma vazla, and the, the the tones are just. I think they're powerful. La 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 yeah. la la. It's like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Okay. Um, let's see. The Mishmar. Beit Sar Hatabachim El Beit Hasohar Makom Asher Yosef Sham. Fantastic. It, thank, thank you. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The Shiva, and I think I asked this before and you said it's advanced. Why yes. is there a uh, Shiva? Yes. yes. <coughs> well, first, do you have questions about any of the vocabulary or anything in the passage, in the verse? I, I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, um, so let's translate it out and then we'll get to what why that is what it is. Okay, and he gave them into the um, the uh, chief of the uh, guards gave them into the house of confinement, um, into the prison, a place um, in which Joseph was there, mm -hmm. and he gave them. Okay, so if we think if we think of uh, Mishmar as confinement. Um, so this is a construct phrase here. Mishmar Beit Saratabachim. First of all, the word Natan doesn't mean just give. It also means put. So he put them in the, in the guard of the house of the Tabachim. Of, or the, the house of the chief cook. It sounds kind of weird to imprison people in the cook's house. But apparently that's what he did. And then the this is an appositive for that. It's called uh, El Beta Soha, which is in, into the into the jail, the prison. He put them in confinement in the house of the, uh, the chief cook in the prison. Then we have a construct, Mekom Asher Yosef Sham. This construct is basically governing this entire relative phrase. Okay, which Joseph is there means where jo Joseph was. This is the place of where Joseph was. We sometimes find the construct used in these in these types of uh, uh, interesting ways, like Genesis chapter one verse one that we've talked about before. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We actually have a construct yes. that is joined to a, a definite verb form. Um, it's just an interesting mm. construction, and uh, mm -hmm. we have to say, "Wow, Hebrew, that's nice." Um, yes, it is. It's the normal, the normal form of makom, of course, is with kamatz. Makom means place. So mekom, mekom with the shva means place of, right? Place of, and this place of is connected to this whole phrase as a construct. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yes, indeed. Mishma would be guard or or confinement. Beit uh, is construct of this one, Saratabachim, which is also a construct. The house of the chief cook. 
Um, Beit HaSohar is still the word in Hebrew that means prison today in Israel. Um, just notice the difference of meaning that Natan can mean he put or he gave. Okay, so he put them in confinement. All right, and Gio, you get the next one. Jason, I'm going to have to leave before Gio starts. Oh, is it that time already? Wow, it has been an hour and a half. All right. Um, uh, I'll be back next Thursday. Well, John, it was nice to have you, and we'll see you next week. Everybody stay healthy. Okay. Bye, Jason. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, Gio, if you would go ahead. Oh, yeah. That's... And you can mark any words that you find uh, challenging or or problematic. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's that? Vayif Kod? Yeah, Vayif Kod. And that's just so you know the thematic vowel that we mentioned earlier, if code, like uh, like Ishmo. Sorry, go ahead. By if code. By if code. Sar. Hatab. Hatabachim. Mm-hmm. Ed Yosef. E. By by share by share it. By share it. By share it. Itam. Otam. Otam. Ooh, look at the difference there. Where we've got itam and otam. You remember that? They are both et, but one is for the direct object. And one is with. This is with them, and this is just them. Okay. Otam by by. Pretty hard for me. Vayi you. Vayi you. Go ahead and take that come that shva there as vocal. Yi he you. Why hey you? Yamim. Be mishmar. Mishmar. And the mishmar is again that uh, what we got from the last verse: confinement, guard, like he's under guard. Okay. Uh, any words here that are problematic? I would think maybe this one, the verb. Okay, this is a PL verb. Uh, we are not going to get into the PL stem for a while. We're going to encounter a few verbs that we need to know just because we need to know them. Like, Yedaber, he, uh, he will speak. Yedaber, he will speak. This is Yesharet. Yesharet. He will serve. Yesharet. To serve, sharet. Yesharet, vayesharet, vayesharet, and he served. So this is he served them. Okay. Probably the subject is Joseph. Joseph served them, and them is the the cupbearer and the uh, baker. This is challah. You can't you can't tell, but that's challah. So a cup and bread. So he served them, he served the cupbearer and the, the baker. Okay, so let's start here. Do you know this verb? Yeah. By... Uh, it's kind of a tricky word. Is it a card? Yeah. Pakad. 
um, it has a lot of meanings. Um, in the Bible, if a lot of times it says that the Lord will visit, the Lord visited the people and punished them for their sins. This is the word that's used for visit. He visited, he visited them and punished them. Um, in this case, because it's saying et, it has a direct object, I would say that he put him in charge. Or he, uh, like he put him there. He put him with them. Yeah, it could be assigned. Uh, assigned. Uh -huh. um, okay. It's connected to the idea of orders. Um, pekuda, pekuda means order, like like a military order. Um, lefaked in like, the in the modern Hebrew, lefaked is like a, a, to command in the military, and it's related to this. I'm in charge or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he put him he put him in charge with them, like with them in the. In the jail, I don't know if I don't know if he necessarily had power over them. He, he put them with put him with them. I don't think at this time he was he was given any power. You know what I mean? Let's, we should see how how it's translated. Like the, the, like mm -hmm. the chief of uh, the guard, like, uh, assign Joseph to be with them. Yes, that's Take a good way to, that's a good way to say it, yeah. Okay? Yeah, All right. And he served them. And what is here? Um... And they were like remained in jail or the confinement. Yeah, for for days. Yamim is days, right? Yeah. And they were there, and they were in confinement days. And they weren't there for a night. They were a few days. Um, we have, I think, just this one last slide. So we'll tackle this real quick. This is Vayachal uh, uh, They dreamed. Vayachal Chalom, they dreamed a dream. Shnehem, Shnaim is two. Shnehem is both of them, the two of them. Ish Chalomo, each person, a person, his dream. So each had his own dream. They dreamed a dream, the two of them, a man, his dream. Belayla Echad, in one night. Belayla Echad. Ish kfitron chalomo, a man according to the interpretation of his dream, like each man with his own dreams interpretation. Hamashke vehaufe, the cupbearer and the baker, asher lemelech mitzrayim. Okay, who are who belong to or who served the king of, of Egypt. Asher Beveta Sohar, who were in the prison. Okay? Any questions or issues here, things that we should look at? No? Okay, so we have we've completed everything that I wanted to go over, but I want to pull up the vocabulary grouping page that I made before and um, kind of look at it a little bit so we can understand like what's going on and what it, what's expected with the, the whole thing. Um, have you read this already? Yeah. Um, Jason. Uh... Uh-huh. I just have a concern. I think the uh, the link you provided in the uh, in the Moodle is broken. So whenever I tried to to download that, if you have updated that, that ah. those links are not working. Okay, I'll check that. I'll check that. It's um uh, it's on my website. Uh, just uploaded as a file storage. So I'll check it. Um, <clears throat> basically, um. 
I put all the vocabulary from the chapters on this, on this sheet. You open up the chapter, like chapter six. Day one, whatever, you need to study vocabulary every day. It takes about five, ten minutes. This isn't, it's not, if you do it a short amount of time with a few words, it's much easier to, to, to hold it, to memorize it. So if you sit down on day one and you read ein, ein, and you say, okay, this is, there is, or there are, there are not, it uh, can be is or are. Achal, he ate, ele, these, im, if, bo, pit, or cistern, or well, a hole in the ground, and ben, a son. Just go over these a few times, cover them up, repeat them, and then ask yourself from English to Hebrew, how do I say a pit? How do I say that in Hebrew? Ah, bo. Um, how do I say these? I say ele. Like run back and forth, English and Hebrew. Then do what it says at the bottom. Review chapter four. If you've already covered chapter four, then you should be able to run through this whole list in like three minutes, four minutes, because you already know the words from the previous chapter. So you, you have two tasks. You have the days list, which takes a few minutes to sit and just run it back and forth to yourself. Cover up the site in Hebrew or in English. Go back and forth. And then do what's at the bottom. Most of the time, the what's at the bottom is to review one days. So when you're doing day two, you're going to go through these words, repeat them back and forth, back and forth, practice them. Find out which words you're not able to go back and forth with from English to Hebrew, Hebrew to English. And then, like, mark them for yourself, because these are the words that you need to focus on. And review day one. You're on the second day, do this one again. When you go to day three, memorize these words back and forth, back and forth. Re review days one and two and the previous chapter. So you're constantly reinforcing the things you've already gone over. And you're adding to them little by little, little increments. But vocabulary is going to definitely be the most difficult part of any language learning. But if you don't have words, then you can't build sentences. So learning vocabulary is an essential part of any language study. And I think that uh, using it this way, it's an idea that I got from somebody who posted on the uh, nerdy language majors. Um, I can't remember right now. I think I may have put it in on the front page. But uh, it's a really good idea. Yep, here. Um, Chris Fresh, that he wrote uh, a blog entry about it. It's fantastic. You should read it. But um, please donate time to vocabulary so that we can not get stuck on, on words. And that's, I just wanted to bring that up and encourage you in that item. Um, apart from that, I don't have anything else to add. I think we basically finished with what we needed to do for today. Are there any issues that we need to tie up before we let each other go? And nothing really for me. Uh, no. Looking forward to the link get fixed so that I can download that and commit myself to the vocabulary. I'll do that right after we get off of here before I even upload the video. Thank you. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good too. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much, much for uh, uh, Thank you. a week packed with a lot of information. We are starting <laughs> verbs. I hope you're as excited about that as I am, because I really am. <laughs> I am. All right. We'll we'll see you guys right. next week. All right. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Goodbye.